One of the very special things about Northwest Pennsylvania and New York around here is making maple syrup. So we're up here with my friends, the McCrays, and David's got his tractor out and they're collecting sap to make maple syrup. So we're gonna kind of follow through the process and hear from him how they make their syrup all the way through the process. So come along for the journey, it's gonna be fun. So what we got going on here, how the process starts, is we drill holes in the trees. In the old days, we would start with a 7 16 hole, which is almost half inch, which is a huge hole. Nowadays, we use vacuum and we can we use less than a quarter inch hole. So we're hardly drilling any, it's more like a woodpecker hole in the tree. But as you can see it here, when a tree runs, gases are coming off with the sap. So see all them bubbles? And you can see it moving down the line here. If you look down here, this is sap moving down the line. And this is perfect. You wanna see it moving real slow. So I'll unplug this and you can watch it. When I unplug it, you're gonna watch those bubbles fly. You see they're gone. And the line emptied out. And then you can just hear it like it's, there's 25 inches of vacuum on there. So we're gonna put it, close it back up. And you can see it start running again, coming back out of the tree. Go take it down and hold it down in the sap for me. So here is one of our um, about five different tanks we have and coming to this tank there's about 400 taps. So we have vacuum we run on our tubing and we have our releaser here which pulls the sap down and we run about 25 inches of vacuum on all our tubing. This is a main collection point and we have these are called our main lines here and each of our main lines we have 5 16 lateral lines which you can see coming off here. And then those go from tree to tree. And then in each tree, we have a, uh, our taps that tap the individual tree. Like if you'd imagine like a big tree, it has all these limbs coming down into bigger limbs and then it comes down into the main stalk. And that's basically what we have here. So then we run down into these milk tanks, which are insulated. Um, and that keeps the sap pretty cool until we're ready to collect it. Um, today's- So this was nice and full when you found it? Yeah, so the tank was just about full, and the next ones we get to, I bet, it might be overflowing. <laughs> so it's coming out of here, and then it's going into this bolt tank here? Yeah, so we have a we have pump, we have two different wagons we gather on, and a truck. So we, um, we pump it from each of our tanks up into this uh, gathering tank we use, which is 1,500 gallons. So we use this to transport it back to the sugar house. Uh, at which point then we filter it several times and run it through our RO machine and then boil the syrup down. But it's getting pretty full. It's really running good today. We're probably going to get at least two to three gallons per cap, I guess. So we should make a lot of good syrup tonight. The maple syrup process starts when we pump the sap into our holding tank in here. So we have a, a sump pump, which we pump it in here. And it comes through this filter here, which filters down to like five microns. And we put it down in our holding tank down here. You can see we're just about done, get closer done for the day. But it's pretty clear when it comes into here. At this point, the sap averages between one, five percent sugar to about 2.2 percent sugar. And that makes us range from about 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of maple syrup to about 55 gallons. So it's quite a difference. So we check our sap when it comes in here, uh, we clean it, and then from here it goes over, over to our RO system. So this is our RO machine here. What this does is it takes raw sap, which takes on average 40 to 50 to sometimes 55 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup, and it takes it down so we only have to boil about eight gallons. So what it does is it, it brings it in with pressure pumps, and it runs through these two canisters. These canisters are kind of like a paper towel roll. The water can seep through the paper towel roll, but the sugar can't, so it separates them out. And it goes through this one first, and then it goes through that one, and then it goes up into our storage tank above our evaporator. At that point, it's ready to boil. So we use, I try not to run over 300 pounds of pressure on it. And this is our flow meter showing. Right now we have two and a half gallons of concentrate flow coming out and I have about 12 gallons of permeate flow coming out. It also gets filtered again through a five micron filler before we, it goes through this machine because we don't want anything to be in these membranes. After our RO system takes the water out of it, it pumps it up to this head tank up top of here. And this just stores it until it gravity feeds into our evaporator. So from that gravity tank, it flows down here through this inch pipe down into our float box. 
And what we have is called, uh, on our evaporator, we have a steam way on it. What it does is it uses steam from the bottom pan to heat this sap in this pan. And then we also have a fan which blows air through it, which makes, which makes the concentration go from uh, being able to boil 175 gallons an hour to 300 gallons an hour just by using free heat and a fan. Um, so from that point, it goes from the back, there the steam away, comes down into our, uh, goes down to our float system down there in the back, which that regulates the level of the sap in each pan. This automatically levels the, how deep we want the sap in each pan. So it comes down and it flows through this back pan back and forth and then it comes to our front pan. But when it gets to our front pan here, it starts in the far side and it comes through here, it goes back, it comes to the front last pan here and then in the final area. From there, we have it right now, my brother's just taking syrup off here. It comes here, we take it off to the right. Now we're going to tell here, we're going to tell here. It's a digital, here's a digital uh, odometer, a digital meter to measure when the syrup's getting close, and then we use our hydrometer to give it an exact measurement. So what are you looking for here? So this red line on here tells it the density of the syrup and says that it's syrup. If, it, if it's right on that red line, it's syrup, so it's a little bit heavy right now. So this is a digital grader. So what we do is we put a clear sample in and this uh, tells you exactly what the grader surface is. So we put that in, push the button. Now we'll take it out and put our sample in. Push the button again. So it's at 75. So we look on the back, our scale here, and everything 75 and above is golden or light syrup. Anything 50 to 74 is amber or medium. Uh, 25 to 50 is dark syrup, and anything below that is very dark syrup. So this is, uh, and it's an exact measurement, so we don't have to guess or put it up to the light and be like, oh, you know, is that about medium or what? This tells us exactly what it is. So, so the last process we have here is canning syrup. Uh, it comes through our filter press into here, and you can see it, and we actually just have this cloth in here just in case something would go around the edges somehow. But anyway, so it comes into here for the final canning phase. This holds about 15 gallons, and we use our hot water from our steam away to keep the syrup at 180 degrees for canning it. That way it seals, but it's not too hot. So our family started making syrup with my grandpa when my dad was a little kid, so about in the 1970s. Um, my grandpa made it in another sugar house down by his house. He started with a little evaporator and my dad helped him. Then when my dad was older, he, and he started on his own evaporator and my grandpa kind of quit for a few years there. When my brother and I got into our teen years, we, uh, we started doing it again and we started with the same evaporator sugar house my dad was using. Started little. It's a hobby of ours. Um, we enjoy it. But uh, it's grown over the years to a little bit bigger. We buy, you know, a little bit each year. Uh, but we enjoy it. So if we can help anyone out with any of our various products we have, uh, you can go to our website, McCray Maple Products in Order, or you can call us and we can order or make arrangements for you guys to pick it up. So thank you for the tour and I hope you enjoyed it.